Okay, here I am still using my cell phone <laughs> to film these, so I apologize for the imperfections and the positioning of my eyes and the fact that letters are backwards in the background here. But welcome to another episode of Project 41. Uh, this is a very special episode. I'm very excited because just the other night this happened. been <clears throat> working on the trunk a little, scraping up the deteriorated mat, taking a vacuum to it. As you can see, there are spots where it still has the factory black uh, chassis paint. It's in very good shape. I'm, I'm not disappointed. I'm not finding any rust anywhere yet. I mean, it is a Colorado car, so but she is in impressive shape. Okay, taking a breather from cleaning the trunk and getting distracted, I figured I'd show you some of the stash here. Things I've collected from the two shows at Rhinebeck and uh, some mail order stuff. I'm going to open those goodies on camera. I'm very, very excited about what's in those boxes. But uh, there's carburetor that's going on her, intake manifold, valve covers, transmission pan with a drain plug, my air filter, the original <laughs> cold air intake. trying to do this one-handed that's the uh, well vacuum booster for the power brake setup what I'm actually going to be doing is mounting the master cylinder where the stock master cylinder is beneath the driver's side floorboard um, and have a stock looking pedal but it's still going to have four-wheel power disc brakes and I'm going with basically the, the same setup that was in the 79 Caddy donor car. Got here my uh, air horns. And the second tier beneath here is uh, the reserve air tank and the compressor. Whoops. Headlights with built-in parking lights and turn signals. And, uh, well, here, I'll show you why. You can see I've already started taking the nose apart. Or re-disassembled. Um, in 1941, cars had an awful lot of trim. I mean, well, a lot of cars did. Luxury cars did. We're talking just before World War II broke out, and then all of a sudden there were cars without trim, cars with painted trim, and then no cars at all, as the factories geared up to build war machines, which is the way it was done. But as you can see on the front fenders, you've got a big trim ring around the headlight with this to bridge up to here, and this was the turn signal. Yes, it had turn signals in 1941. And there's a big, gaudy lamp, big ornate thing that sits on top here with that, which I'm just, I, I don't care for. And then on top of that, you have the spear down the side, which I may or may not leave. It is a big, fat fender. It probably wouldn't hurt to have at least one spear. But... I think the combination of the two makes it look a little gaudy, so I'm going to go with a plain trim ring, and I'm going to shave this completely off. You know, the holes in the fender will be patched over, and there'll be a plain trim ring, and then I'll have those headlights with my built-in directionals. There's the caddy motor. Oh, there you go, kitties. A glimpse of what's going to be the interior. 
going to get those seats upholstered in um, GM beige. Going with a lot of GM beige to match the steering wheel I got. Which, ooh, let me show you the steering wheel. It's beautiful. That's my transmission pan. Horn button and adapter kit so I can mount it onto the caddy steering column, which is already in the car. As you can see, it's got a chrome grip, and it's not your typical banjo wheel that so many hot rods and street rods have. Those three-spoke banjo wheels, I've seen so many of them lately that I don't ever want to see another one again. You know, I've, I've seen variants of this boomerang-style wheel. Not often, but I have seen them, and I like them. And on top of that, they're different, which makes it appeal to me even more. I don't want what everyone else has. That's part of the reason my daily driver is not a Mustang, because every schmuck and his brother has a Mustang. Nothing against them. I love the cars, and some of my good friends have them. But... If they're too popular, I kind of lose interest. I gotta be me. I gotta stand out from the crowd. Yeah, sure, Dave. Knock your shit to the ground. Inline electric fuel pump, which puts out roughly 7 PSI, which will be perfect to feed the chrome toilet. We don't want too much. It's, it's hard to find electric fuel pumps I have found that are good for carburetors. Most, most people are going with fuel injection these days, and with fuel injection you're running at least 40 PSI, which is way too much for a little needle valve in a carburetor. Now these are wheel spacers. Well, they call them wheel adapters because they come with the lug nuts to mount them and the lugs. Um, these are two inch wheel adapters and the reason I got these is because the rear end that came out of the caddy is just a, a, a skosh too narrow for the 41 and so those wheels tend to rub on the inside a little bit. So. I'm going to go ahead and put those wheel adapters on when I yank the, the wheels off on the back to do my thing with the brakes and such. Oh yeah, all kinds of rigging under here. Uh, the rear end I never did get bolted in place. It's scrapped in place partially and partially bolted in place. So that will have to get taken care of. Oh, again, there's my glorious trunk. I was so happy when I started cleaning that out. And, uh, in the Speedway box over here, we have motor mount adapters. Why do I need adapters? I'll take a look at how far forward the engine and transmission are sitting. Even if I cut out some of the inside of the gravel plate here, I'm still not going to have enough room for what I have to do on this engine, what I'm going to have to bolt to it and such. And so those adapter kits are going to allow me to slide the engine and the transmission back closer to this firewall. Okay, a buddy of mine came over. And I had to do the brakes on his Subaru, so I got a little distracted, a little sidetracked, and I had some other things to do today, but I have gotten back to the project. And as you can see, the nose is coming apart nicely. 
I have very little left to do to take her apart, but I'm definitely done turning wrenches for today. I'm in quite a bit of pain at this point. Now, can I tell you, kitties getting old is not for the faint of heart. For those of you with weak constitutions, <laughs> you better hold on to your boyfriends. Nah. Okay, I, I got the window open. I got the door open. I started cleaning out the interior a little bit here. I don't know why. Looks like it's having trouble focusing in here. But anyway, these seats I intend to have reupholstered in leather in uh, GM beige to match that steering wheel. And I'm going to paint the column to match. Probably going to go with a wood grain applique on most of the dashboard. And some uh, old style looking but digitally powered gauges over there. And that radio is going to come out and I'm going to use that as a center console for a bunch of things. The sound system, navigation, probably air conditioning controls. Going to go with uh, vintage air. Haven't gotten a hold of them yet, but I intend to. Over here is the fender and the hood. I found the front bumper <laughs> was stashed in the car. And uh, as I promised earlier, I'm going to open up this special delivery package right here on camera. I'm particularly excited. I got in touch with this company uh, up in New Hampshire. Uh, they've got a whole lot of goodies. I, I, I am far from being done ordering from them. Okay, so what we have here in the little box are my power door lock mechanisms. I know there are friends of mine who are balking at well, this whole project, but some of what I'm doing here. These are the conduits that are going to go between the doors and the door jams to carry the wires. But, um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, as I have explained to many people, there is a method to my madness and I'm doing what I'm doing for a reason. Um, one of the first things that brought me and my wife of 16 years together was our mutual love of cars and working on them and racing them. And she now has multiple sclerosis and cannot really do much with me in the garage at this point. And does not drive very often. So, I am building this car so that she will be able to drive it. And that includes those power door lock mechanisms and these power window kits. Oh, here. Each kit comes with exactly what I need to do two windows. So I got two kits because I have four windows that are going to be power operated. Obviously the main window slides down, the vent window twists open, but these back windows also roll down. So I've got two kits each to do two windows. This is a particularly useful kit.
got all kinds of wiring and connectors. Pretty much everything you need to get started, electrically speaking. Here's the familiar looking fuse box with the uh, relay for the directional signals. Somewhere in here I remember seeing an ignition switch with keys. Lots and lots and lots of relays and connectors and harnesses and switches. Ah, here we are. An ignition switch with a key. Well, I'm sorry if this episode wasn't very uh, exciting, but uh, I did at least want to get a little something uh, posted up. I, uh, I don't get to do this nearly as often as I'd like. Uh, I don't even get to work on this thing as often as I'd like. And again, I know there's only a handful of you out there who are actually watching these, but uh, I shall try not to disappoint. Um, so far I've been pretty happy with the things I've found in this car as I'm getting into the project. I know a lot of times uh, you get started on something and you don't exactly find Easter eggs, <laughs> or if you do they're rotten. Um, this has been the exact opposite, knock on genuine imitation vinyl wood grain veneer. Um, I've been happy with all uh, the surprises she's had for me so far. Still don't have a name for her, um, just the musical reference for the plate. Uh, you all know I've got back in black on the SI. Uh, well, <laughs> this one's going to get some... Uh, interesting combination of, of, of letters to spell out Duke of Earl, uh, not just because uh, of, of Hot Rodding's popularity in the 50s, but, uh, uh, well, because the car was designed under the watchful eye of Harley Earl. So I thought it was kind of appropriate. So that'll about do it for this edition of Project 41. Uh, stay tuned, kitties. You never know when I uh, might be back to bore you to tears again. <laughs>